gotta love ankylosaurs. They're everyone's favorite angry pineapples. At this point, they're known from about 50 genera and species, but the one that started it all, Ankylosaurus, went through many series of revisions on its anatomy as ideas on dinosaur biology changed, and as more fossil material of both Ankylosaurus and its relatives were unearthed. Come with me on a journey of Ankylosaurus through the decades. The history of paleontology is an interesting subject. Like every field of science, paleontology has had to go through many different paradigm shifts to end up the way it is today. Ideas of how evolution works, the very notion of extinction, and plate tectonics have all morphed as new data has been collected. The story of Ankylosaurus and its many changing faces mirrors most other dinosaurs and prehistoric animals but its history is rife with very unique interpretations of everyone's favorite hammer turtle. Armored Armadillo, Brown, 1908 Ankylosaurus was first discovered in 1906 by workers from the American Museum of Natural History. World-renowned paleontologist Barnum Brown, who was the guy who found Tyrannosaurus, led the expedition that found Ankylosaurus. The bones they found consisted of most of the skeleton, you know, your usual neck, back, and tail vertebrae, as well as the top of the fused skull, a ton of ribs, shoulder blades, and a kitchen cabinet full of osteoderms. In the 1908 paper that gave the specimen its fancy name, Ankylosaurus magni ventris, there was a skeletal reconstruction of what the authors thought the critter might have looked like, given the laws of symmetry and filling in missing pieces from more completely known close relatives. At the time, the closest known relative was Stegosaurus, and since we now know Ankylosaurus and Stegosaurus are not closely related, we also know they shared virtually nothing in common in how their bodies are constructed. As you can see, the skeleton was reconstructed with a heavily arched back and tail. The arched back was based on Stegosaurus, which was also thought to have such a bizarre curled skeleton at the time. Barnum Brown writes in the paper that Ankylosaurus shares a lot of similarities to Glyptodonts, car-sized armadillo relatives that carried huge armored shells over their arched and curved skeletons. Brown wasn't completely off his rocker though, since the ribs are co-ossified, or fused, to the vertebrae they attach to. This gave Brown and company the thought that they were extremely rigid animals, which they are. The skull is felled out in a turtle-like shape as well. The armor's placement was largely unknown at the time, so it's kind of just arranged in parallel rows, running down the back, neck, and tail. Is there anything missing? <laughs> Shoot, the thing doesn't have a club. Where's the club this group of dinosaurs is most known for? Well, the club was unknown at the time Ankylosaurus was described. It wasn't found with the skeleton. That would come later. Squatty Potty, Rudolf Zallinger, 1947. 1910 saw another expedition from the American Museum of Natural History to Alberta, Canada. This led to excavations in the Scholard Formation, which is a layer of rock dating to the latest Cretaceous to early Paleocene, 70 to 65 million years ago. This makes it somewhat equivalent in time to the Hell Creek Formation. The new Ankylosaurus specimen found during this expedition included good bits missing from the first specimen. You've got a complete skull and jaw, the tail club, ribs, more vertebrae, limbs, and armor. Turns out, this is the only known tail club of Ankylosaurus. Skip ahead in time to 1947, and we've got another Ankylosaurus find on our hands. This time it was dug up by Charles Sternberg and T. Potter Chamney in the same formation and region as the 1910 find. This one was just a skull and jaw, and it's the largest one so far found. In the same year of 1947, paleoartist Rudolf Salinger finished what some consider his magnum opus, The Age of Reptiles. The project started five years earlier for the Yale Peabody Museum as a mural to depict the various forms of life throughout the Mesozoic era, which effectively showed evolution and change over time. There are many groundbreaking reconstructions in this work, as it was extremely influential to how the public came to understand the dinosaurs. 
Sure, dinosaurs appeared in the movies before the painting existed, but this laid the blueprints for how dinosaurs would be reconstructed after. One little dinosaur in this grand mural is our friend Ankylosaurus. Our little buddy takes a lot of notes from the newer fossil finds. No longer does it have scoliosis, stegosaurus proportions, or a stubby tail. The new Ankylosaurus is replete with a series of spines running down its flanks, rectangular osteoderm chainmail from the back of its head, across the back, and down the tail. The limbs are now squat like a lizard and roughly equal in length, giving this beast a flatter, more turtle-like appearance. The head definitely looks more like the fossils, with a general triangular shape, the four backwards pointing horns, and heavily fused armor. Millions of people would see this reconstruction. It then influenced the next, possibly more famous Ankylosaurus. Angry Pineapple, World's Fair 1964 The World's Fair is an exhibition held to showcase the achievements of nations. The one held in New York City from 1964 to 1965 had an exhibit produced by Sinclair Oil, recreating a set of dinosaurs in their natural environments. Among the highly detailed but now super outdated Brontosaurus, Tyrannosaurus, and Triceratops was an Ankylosaurus statue. This Ankylosaurus was based on Zalinger's Age of Reptiles Ankylosaurus, as it keeps the same armor orientation, short squat legs, and short tail. However, its head is almost one for one what the critter's head looks like even to this day. Zalinger didn't use direct measurements from the animal's fossils when painting his mural, so the skull of his Ankylosaurus doesn't actually match the real one. The sculpture made for Sinclair Oil did use the real fossils for reference, and that's how its head is still spot on to the real animal more than a half century later. I'd like to note here that the skirt of spines in this and Zalinger's reconstructions is due to misidentification and confusion with other known ankylosaurs. Edmontonia is a rotund notosaur type ankylosaur with no tail club, huge shoulder pikes, and a skirt of spines around the body. During the 50s and 60s, bits from these guys were variously lumped or grouped together with ankylosaurus. Turtle Face, Peter Zalinger, 1986 Just one more Ankylosaurus specimen, consisting of a tail vertebra, has been found since. That wee chunk of tail was found in the 1960s. Since then, only fragments of Ankylosaurus have been found. Ankylosaurus research has largely been conducted on the arrangement of the armor, proportions of the body, and the family tree of Ankylosaurus and all specimens labeled Ankylosaurus. As such, the next step in the evolution of the appearance of Ankylosaurus came as a result of the dinosaur renaissance and by the hands of paleoartist Peter Zalinger, who has no relation to Rudolf Zalinger as far as I'm aware. Zalinger provided a reconstruction of a handful of Ankylosaurs for the book Dinosaurs and Other Archosaurs, published in 1986. The other reconstructions in the book are painfully dinosaur renaissancean, with all of them sporting slim-down proportions, skinny legs with little muscles, and bony skulls. These aren't the most extreme versions of this, but it's pretty obvious. Near the end of the book are those ankylosaurs I mentioned. Present are Acanthophilus, Scolosaurus, and Ankylosaurus. Let's ignore the other butt uglies and ogle the ankylosaurus. It's got the right skull, but the tip of the snout is still too pointy and narrow. These guys had huge, downturned moose mouths for gathering large amounts of plants at once. The legs are thinner than the angry pineapple reconstructions, which is good, but they still omit how robust their legs actually were. The armor is incorrect, but that's to be expected. At least it's not the Notosaur-style armor seen in earlier reconstructions. Shield your behind, Ford 2003. Enter Tracy Ford, a self-taught paleontologist and paleoartist with many decades' experience in the field. He published a paper in 2003 about the armor orientation of Ankylosaurus. By this time, the skeleton of Ankylosaurus had been recombobulated thanks to the work of the dinosaur renaissance and new close relatives of Ankylosaurus like Anodontosaurus and Euoplocephalus. Ford used the known armor of Ankylosaurus, as well as armor from other Ankylosaurs, to fill in the many, many gaps. 
he found that Ankylosaurus had two rings of armor around the neck. These are called cervical half rings. Cervical is just the term used to describe the neck. Each half ring contains three sets of scutes. Ford hypothesized that the animal would have carried a pelvic shield, or a huge sheet of fused osteoderms that capped the pelvis, which was also extremely fused and rigid. The pelvic shield is seen in a few notosaurs, but is unknown in Ankylosaurus. Bony Football, Carpenter, 2004 In 2004, Kenneth Carpenter published a paper redescribing the armor of Ankylosaurus and how he figured the critter was shaped. Carpenter's Ankylosaurus got slim fast, with the front part of the animal now being a bit skinnier. Carpenter also reinterpreted the cervical half rings as quarter rings made up of huge blocks of square bone. The bigger osteoderm lumps were concentrated near the front of the animal with the more rectangular checkerboard pieces over the pelvis. Ford's pelvic shield was thrown out and the tail is now less adorned in armor than it was before. All today's Anki, Arbor and Malone, 2017. Victoria Arbor is the newest ankylosaur expert. She's worked on these turtle dragons for many years, and in 2017 published a paper with Jordan Malone that sought to redescribe ankylosaurus armor once again. This newer paper comes on the heels of several more discoveries of close relatives to ankylosaurus. The armor orientation in this paper is therefore more accurate to what is currently known about ankylosaur biology than past reconstructions. The team found all known ankylosaurus material should belong to the same genus and species, as ankylosaurs are known to have high levels of individual variation. They found that ankylosaurus had a rather wide ovular body, bigger and beefier than carpenters and even Ford's reconstructions. Arbor and Malone's ankylosaurus now sports high-keeled osteoderms outlining the pelvic region with the lumpy osteoderms near the front. The head is proportionally a bit smaller, and the cervical half rings are back, this time without the flat rectangular plates. The tail is now more decked out in armor with a bigger tail club than Carpenter's diagram. This is how Ankylosaurus looks today. It's gone through many revisions. We started off back in the early 1900s with a bizarre glyptodont stegosaur type of thing and have seen the ankylosaur change into an angry pineapple, then to a shape more familiar, only to morph again into Ford's notosaur-esque creature, to Carpenter's almost right one, to today's better informed ankylosaurus. What did you think of this stroll through paleoart and paleontological history? Should I do it for more dinosaurs? Throw me some suggestions in the comment section below. For more interesting stories about nature, the history of life, or what goes bump in the night, subscribe, hit the bell icon for updates, like this video, and drop a comment in the comment section below. Thanks for watching. This video is partially brought to you by my lovely patrons. Pledge to that Patreon at any tier you like for many delicious offerings, like art, behind the scenes content, special discord roles, and some physical products that will be revealed in the near future. Special thanks to my elephant tier patrons, Thea Svensson, Staniforth Hopkins, Dinosaur, and Arda Bayer, as well as my Tyrannosaurus tier patrons, Henry Brennan, Danny Van Heck, Dana Manchester, Chris Frampton, and Admin.